Good morning from the base of Torrey's Peak here, just at the road split where to my right goes the standard trailhead and to the left, I'm gonna be going up to the upper Grizzly Gulch trailhead, which means today gonna be tackling the Emperor Kular on Torrey's Peak. For a full guide of this snow climb and descent, you can check the link in the description below. First split of the day, I'm gonna to continue to the right here. And the reason I haven't put on my split board yet is because you do have to cross the creek right up here and I really didn't want to transition and put my skins on and then get to the creek and have to take everything off so uh, luckily everything has a really solid freeze from last night let's talk about this line quickly Emperor Kular is about 4,000 feet of climbing from that initial split I showed you and about 4,500 from the lower trailhead right off I-70. The line is about nine miles from the lower trailhead and then take off, you know, about maybe two miles of that if uh, you're starting from the upper parking lot. That creek crossing is what I was worried about. Now it's time to pop on the skins and start skinning up. First glimpse at your line, basically up there, summit of Torrey's Peak. I'm on pretty much the second of maybe three, potentially four, depending on how you uh, come down and up. But this stream crossing here, and then the initial one I showed you, are really nice today, because I have a cool, established, firm snow bridge. But later in the season, where this line still stays in, these bridges do not. And so these creek crossings can be kind of a pain in the ass on the approach and the descent. Here's like another kind of crucial moment. So I know that I can take this way, but I am going to trust this skin track because this creek that's in this area can be tricky to cross. And I know I'm on the left side of it when I start climbing, obviously. So I'll, I'm gonna hope that this line goes and doesn't screw me. Fingers crossed. Luckily, straying from my GPX file did me good as just about the base of the cooler now. See right up here, we're gonna start the booting and up towards the top, which you have some options and I'll talk about that later. So this is a north, northeast facing line. Still want to get an early start though, because uh, if there is any chance of wet slides, this is a pretty prone area. This line should last into June, but your descent and approach will be a lot different. As it turns out, Dead uh, Emperor is a popular line today, but that at the base here, you can see some people skinning up. So you theoretically probably could go up uh, quite a bit farther depending on snow conditions. As I've made pretty clear in past videos, I am still working on getting better at skinning. So I'm just gonna start booting it. I'll be way faster that way. From here to the summit, just about another uh, 3000 feet of climbing. So quite a climb ahead of you. Dead Dog or Tuning Fork located on Tories. It's a bit, a bit more aesthetically pleasing. You can kind of see the rocks and the weaving that it does uh, in here. It also is dynamic with snow because you can see 
This is more east facing, kind of getting a little bit touched by the sun. And then in here, obviously, true north and just real powder in here. I'm going to address something so you can see I got my two hiking poles and I've had a couple other comments and videos talk about why you're not using a mountain axe instead of hiking poles to boot up. And this is going to come down to two things really. The snow, first and foremost, the snow conditions, and number two, your experience and comfort level in that snow. So this booter, give you a, a closer look at it here, is essentially powder and it's been established by at least five people that I know of. So there's not any reason with crampons on that I'm worried about falling. If that changes, of course, I will stop and take my mountain axe out, but you have to make that call for yourself. Obviously being able to self arrest if you need to is could save your life, I mean, quite frankly. But this is just not a situation where I feel like I need to have my axe out. Look at the upper section, midsection probably. other hikers, climbers, skiers, approaching kind of the upper section here for scale. This is looking down on the standard no GoPro vision. About 12.6 here, so you can see kind of an obvious fork. You're gonna want to stay left. Pretty obvious the booter goes that way. You can obviously uh, come down to the right. Get creative, do you? Man, F's in the chat to whoever made this friggin' booter here. Instead of going up the left side, they chose to go into this shallow shit, and it's just fucking horrible. I don't know why that decision was made. It's really frustrating. Looking at the final section here, if you go right, that's gonna be the standard Easiest way to get out of this coolie, going left here, a little bit steeper and not as direct. Your choice. Here's a look at the angle for you and back down. Really nice cool out here. Pretty aesthetically pleasing. Uh, not super steep. I think this is probably like 40, 45 at max. So definitely gonna take my time on this on the way down, but hopefully uh, the snow is a little soft. Looking down, definitely the uh, crux here. This is gonna be real crappy survival split boarding. Just really firm. Knife edge right there of Kelso. So I'm gonna rejoin standard trail and the summit right here. I am gonna have to uh, boot it down just a little bit here because I, as much as I love summit to car, I do not want core shots. So uh, tag the summit here, transition, and then probably get out of here. It's not super late, but it's cold and I don't think the snow is gonna soften up that much more. So I'd rather get off the steep stuff and then uh, be able to enjoy the lower stuff before it turns to mush. Tories here. A little windy, not terrible. Views are really nice. Just about 4,000 feet of climbing to the summit here. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to, like I said earlier, gonna boot it down a little bit and then hit that left side of the uh, choke, crux, whatever you want to call it. Hopefully it rides a little better since it's east facing. Uh, but yeah, really excited to uh, see what Emperor is all about from a split board perspective. You guys know how much I love filming, but for this initial spot, until I get through this uh, really icy steep part, I'm gonna just really focus on safety over filming. So I will have uh, the 360 going, but apologies if it's not 
quality you're used to will uh, make up for that on the rest of the way down. back up I told you it was gonna be ugly boy is that snow not good looking down here hopefully it'll get better as we keep going quite blower pow but it'll do pretty good stuff All right, so this is your exit. Uh, without taking away from all the fun here, this is pretty important. So this creek will pretty much dictate what you're doing. Uh, if you can cross it up here, I would probably recommend doing that because this will just be a little bit more established, but you could kind of go right through the trees like the way we approached. It's really up to you. put the camera away now I've decided I'm gonna go hey 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 I don't know I still haven't really decided yet but I think I'm gonna go back through the trees well I fucked up Probably should have gone out to the road, but here we are in the trees again. And if there's a negative about any of the north facing lines on Torrey's Peak, it's the exit, especially if you're on a split board. So I'm gonna try to keep my spirits high and not take away from the vid here, but boy, this uh, stinks. It not nearly as bad as last time, looking back at the line up there. And this is that other way, the uh, forest road that I decided not to take. Overall, uh, Emperor on Torrey's, Awesome line, kind of variety of climbing and kind of interesting couloir. And then just overall experience of the ride down for me today was really great. I don't want to say that this line was pushing my limits by any means. I'm a very capable snowboarder, but I think what I'm proud of today is how I handled kind of that really icy crux section and 
you can see it wasn't pretty, but got it done. About Emperor and uh, kind of these north facing coolers on Tories in general. And you kind of have a crap shoot where you have to choose between, you know, stuff like this where I'm walking out because I can't, you know, ride on dirt. Then you have the other end of it where you're going to be dealing with a lot of post holing in the woods, most likely on the way out. But if you hit it later in the year, you're going to have way less continuous snow, probably harder to go top to bottom. I mean, even today you saw I had to hike down a bit from the summit. And of course this all changes year to year. It's almost like a fine line between hitting this and suffering one way or the other. The uh, exit was far less painful than last time. Maybe that comes with experience. Maybe there's more snow than last year. Hard to tell, but a little bit of suffering, not a lot, which is what where I like to live. Back at the truck now. And for those randomly asking, yes, I did get a new truck. Thank you for noticing. 8.2 miles, 4,500 feet of gain. So a little bit shorter than what I was thinking in terms of mileage. Maybe that's because I took that wood uh, cut off, but overall, really good day. Uh, for a full trail guide of Emperor Kular on 14 or Tories Peak, you can check the link in the description below. Help support the channel through all my gear, Patreon. Uh, the full hike guide will have a GPX file. It'll have parking information and all that fun stuff. So check that out on my website, thevirtualsherpa.com. Another great spring day in the books. Really happy at uh, 2023 how it's shaping out so far. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next adventure.